Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of the Million Pound Mission Podcast. It's your buddy, Adam, the PhD, the previously heavy dude. And this is episode number 241, the anti-aging warrior with my friend, Jesse Walker. I'm fired up about this one. I know that Jesse is going to light that fire within you guys with this episode. Hopefully, you're enjoying these bonus episodes with my new influencers that I want to introduce you to this week. A little bonus content. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, And, of course, it's always delivered to your your earbuds for free with the Million Pound Mission podcast. Now, before we dive into that, I want to give you another quick reminder that I'm launching my next Habit Launch Challenge on June 10th. Monday, June 10th, we are launching a seven-day, 10-minute mobility challenge. I've cooked up an amazing little free mini course, which with each day you're going to get a 10-minute mobility video. I know a lot of you have like a foam roller collecting dust in the corner of your room that you're you're sitting in right now, probably. So we're going to dust that sucker off. We're going to do uh, body movement mobility, uh, some band work, some foam roller work. Uh, might even get a, a lacrosse ball or a, a softball tennis ball out and show you how to use that as well. So each day, a new nice, gentle, 10-minute easy to implement mobility session is delivered to you. You just follow along with me and you get feeling better. So check that out at habitlaunchchallenge.com. I've got a couple different accountability groups you can sign up for. One of them, you can actually win money. So if you're into that, if that motivates you, you can sign up for that accountability group. You do not have to do that. Uh, That's only if that kind of sparks your interest. I've got a free accountability group as well. There's no money exchange at all. So go to habitlaunchchallenge.com. Check that out. We start June 10th. Now, here's the deal. We all know how easy it is to make excuses as to why we aren't able to reach our goals, right? And we're going to dive into this a lot with this episode. We talk about being too busy, we're too old, we're too out of shape to get into shape. I got to get in shape before I get in shape, Adam. Uh, So with this one, uh, we're going to teach you how to make progress, not excuses, and get after your goals. And my friend Jesse Walker is here The anti-aging warrior is here, and he's going to fire us up. Now, Jesse is a number one best-selling author, a speaker, and a fitness evangelist. I love that. Now, his passion is sharing fitness and anti-aging strategies in a straightforward, no-nonsense way that helps people to overcome their health and fitness challenges and achieve lifelong vitality. And he really doesn't pull any punches. That's why I invited him on the show. I love his mindset. I love his attitude. Uh, He brings the real deal. All right. So in this episode, uh, we talk about where people are really getting confused when it comes to the anti-aging conversation. We talk about his top anti-aging habits. He's a big habit guy. That's another reason why we get along so well. Uh, We talk about his opinions on anti-aging drugs. Super interesting. This is something that I'm very passionate about. I believe this is an issue uh, in our in our population right now. People are are turning to drugs too early, uh, too often. So. Uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> uh, but we talk about that a little bit, and then we get his best advice for somebody that is just starting their journey and just looking for that first foothold to start with. So you're gonna love this this episode. You're gonna love Jesse. He's a good dude, and like like I said, this week I want to shine a spotlight on a few influencers that you that you probably haven't met yet, some people that you haven't been able to be connected with yet. And Jesse is somebody that's on the rise. He's got a great message. He's got great energy, and you're going to love it. So without any further delay, let's dive into episode number 241, The Anti-Aging Warrior with Jesse Walker. All right, Jesse, welcome to the Million Pound Mission Podcast. How are we doing today, my friend? I am doing awesome, Adam. Super excited to be here, man. This is great. Well, I... I knew that we were going to be buddies uh, when I met you at the New Media Summit a few weeks back, and uh, I just love your energy. I love your mindset. I love the intensity and the positivity that you are bringing to the table in the health space as an influencer, so I'm psyched to get you in front of my audience because I know that they are going to really enjoy you and your message, and I kind of like to start off with talking about your personal story and just kind of tell us the story of your health journey and how you are now known as the anti-aging warrior. Uh, so how, how, what's, give us the birth of the, the warrior, the, the origin story, if you will. The origin story. All right. Well, <laughs> this goes way back to when, when I was a little kid. So we're going to go real back pretty far. So, you know, I grew up in the 70s. 
and I always had some weight challenges. You know, I was I was the heavy kid. And obviously childhood obesity is at a whole different level now yeah. than it was back then. So back then I was just one of the one of the few kids that was really overweight. And it was it was hard for me to deal with. I broke my femur when I was eight, which made it worse. I was in a body cast for three months, traction for a month, you know, so just it just really helped me put on more weight, right? Um, but by the time I got into junior high and high school, I really kind of figured it out how to battle it. So I spent the next 15, 20 years up until my 30s really kind of just fighting just to stay normal so that, you know, I, people were making fun of me and I felt more comfortable in my skin. So my original focus with fitness wasn't about health. I'm a kid. It's just about just trying to look good. Yeah. Well, once you get once I got busy, you know, um, one of my 30s, family, working all the time, taking my eye off the ball, then I, I would wake up and then I would be 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds heavier. And I wouldn't even know how it happened, you know. And even though I got into that point where I was obese and I'm in my 30s, I still really didn't do a whole lot about it because I'm thinking I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. It's no big deal. I'll take care of it, right? But what happens is life throws at you some things that start to matter. And for me, what life threw at me was I was 43 and I had the birth of my, my child, my daughter. Yep. And so I'm thinking, well, I'm 43 years old. Um, I'm obese. I'm pre-diabetic. I have high blood pressure. I had, tend had a tendon transplant because of chronic inflammation. All sorts of things are going wrong with my body. Now, now I've got this little person here who I love more than anything in the world, and what's going to happen if 10, 20 years from now I'm not here for, her, or I can't function for her, even, or, or what about if now instead of me taking care of her, she has to take care of me because I didn't take care of myself. Yeah. So these are the things that really went into my head, and I started thinking, okay, well, I have to make a change. And it took a little bit to really understand all the things I need to put into place to make that change. But once I did, I never looked back. And so the anti-aging warrior came in. Well, I'm already 43. I'm going to be 63 when she's 20. I need to figure out how to anti-age. And I got to do it fast so that even though I'm 63, I can treat her just like a father who was 43. You know, have all yeah. the energy, have all the vitality, and be there for my family as long as I possibly can be. Yeah, and I think your warrior, your your anti aging warrior development, that story is going to resonate with a lot of people because, like, I almost won't even take on a client that's in their like twenties because I'm like, you, your why hasn't even come to you yet. Your your why is still that external. You just want to look good on the beach at spring break, and that's not right. going to get you through. And you all of a sudden went through that change where adulthood happened. You started making adult choices and that adult lifestyle, and the weight starts coming on. And then your why got really big all of a sudden with the birth of your daughter. And I always talk about your why. Once your why is bigger than the why nots, that's when the, the progress really starts to happen. Yeah. Uh, so I, I love your story because I feel like it's a story, you know, if you can reach those people that are earlier in their life and they can follow your principles as they get older, uh, no matter what age they find you at, you're going to be able to help them out a lot. So that's, that's our, kind of our mission today. We're going to spearhead that, that conversation a little bit. Um, so speaking about the, the anti-aging conversation, uh -huh. where do you feel like people are really getting confused? Like, let's say somebody's listening to this, they're in their forties, they're kind of mm -hmm. in the position that you were in, like, where are people getting things screwed up in their head as far as where they're putting their action, where they're investing their dollars and kind of just wasting their time a little bit. Right. So the, the industry, I mean, as you know, the fitness energy industry is very confusing. Yeah. Everybody is trying to sell something because it's it's such a lucrative um, industry. And most people, even though they're a little bit older, their why still isn't in the right place. And you can tell that by the marketing. Most of the marketing isn't, let's make you healthy so you'll be able to spend more quality time with your loved ones. Most of it is getting six pack abs, yeah. you know, still regardless of what it is, you know, get your beach body back, look like you're 20 years old, not feel, you know, not, not actually be healthy, but more just get that little hourglass figure back like you're 20 years old. And that's kind of where everything is geared. And so the reason that 95% of the people that start a diet every single year fail 
is because they're chasing that that dream and then they have no plan for even if they hit that goal of losing the weight they have no plan you know for afterwards and so i think where, the, where really the confusion is is people don't come up with a plan that they can do for life and have a reason to do that plan for life uh, so instead it's let me just lose the weight hit this goal real fast but for me, I realized that wasn't going to work. I've actually done that several times. Yeah. I did diets like the HCG diet. Remember that? Oh, yeah. HCG diet, if your listeners don't know, it was a diet where you basically take a female pregnancy hormone and you eat 500 calories a day and then you lose weight. Well, hell yeah, you lose weight. You're eating 500 <laughs> calories a day. You know, it's not the hormone you're taking. It's the 500 calories a day, right? And I lost a ton of weight on that. You know, so you'll see like me, I was fat, then I did this and then I was thinner. And then within a year I was fatter than I was when I started the diet, yep. you know? And so that just, that stuff just has to stop. Yeah. I think I especially see this with guys and every once in a while I, I, I man bash a little bit with the, with the weight loss. Cause we like the male ego, I feel like is a real trip up point for us. Cause we like to do those competitions. We like to do that, that beach body competition or that boot yes. camp where there's a prize. And then once we win that prize or finish the thing. It's like light switch off. And we go back to what we were doing before. Uh, and like, yeah. we really do that a lot. I see it at my gym all the time and where we used to run a boot camp where people could win money. And I stopped doing it because guys would go crazy and win it. And they would be like sitting in the sauna trying to get the weight off and like eating, <laughs> eating, eating as much as possible before their first weigh in. I'm like, this is ridiculous. And then none of them would stick with it. So I'm like, all right, let's just eliminate that whole thing. But I mean, do you, do you feel, I mean, are you seeing any similar patterns with like men versus women? It's just to me, it seems like women just have a more holistic attitude towards health. Like they want to look good and things like that. But I don't know if like it's the, the mothering instinct that, that comes naturally or they're thinking right. about others outside of themselves. But do you, have you seen any uh, difference between men and women as far as being able to, to focus on health versus vanity? Uh, yeah, I think women overall are more concerned about health too. I mean, that, that happens, you know, guys are, they're, they're go, 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 go. And we're very vain. You know what I mean? It really is all about being virile. You know what I mean? And so part of being virile is looking cool and having the muscles and, and all that stuff. But women, um, women tend to be, tend to definitely be more conscious about health. I don't know. I, I find that it is, it's sort of odd for me. I find that women are more concerned about their children having to take care of them when they get older than men are. Interesting. Um, and I think that's probably because a lot of women tend to be caregivers for, um, for their older parents. And maybe they sort of have that fear of them being put in the exact same position. I find that guys don't typically think about that so much. Yeah. They just... Um, they just want to stay young and feel young and feel vibrant for as long as possible. But they don't, unless I, unless I tell them to think about that, they don't really think about that that much. Right. Right. Any, I mean, my, my client base is like 80 to 90% female and it just, yeah. it just happens to be that way. I mean, do you have any advice or just like, how can we shake up the mindset of a guy that's not necessarily being coachable? Like the male ego is tripping him up a little bit, getting caught up in this competitive health thing. Uh, like any, any advice? Cause we're both men. I'm like, we should be able yeah. to communicate to our, our, our men, you know, uh, any advice for somebody that's getting tripped up in that area for that, as a man? Yeah. So what I do with my guys is it goes back to the why. I mean, it really does. We, we just get deep into the why they're doing things because a lot of guys, I mean, we work really, really hard. We work really, really hard for our families. We work hard. So our families have as much as they possibly can. Where guys don't connect the dots is our health is just as important to our families as the finances. Yeah. And so the only way is to get them to bridge that gap to where they say, okay, great. Yeah, it's, it's great that I'm making a lot of money for my family. You know, we've, also, we've already started bridging the gap of, well, I know I make a lot of money for my family, but I need to spend more time with my family. So a lot of guys have already sort of made that. I need to set aside time so I can spend with my wife and spend with my kids and so forth. Because remember before... A lot of us weren't doing that, yep. but now more guys are doing that because they realize, well, that's important. But then the next step of that is, okay, great. So how am I going to be able to show up for my family for as long as possible? Because they're going to need me to do that. And so I'll bring up things like, 
you know, what happens you know, 20 years from now when your family, you guys, your family all wants to go on a trip to China or something like that? How are you going to go if you're on a freaking lung machine or you can't even really walk? You know, how are you going to do all these things? Are you going to be able to enjoy these things with your children? And when they start to think about things that way, I mean, that's really all you can do. All you can do is sort of get them to connect why fitness is going to affect the rest of the people and their family and the people they care about. And that's that's it. I mean, I can't think of any other way to really get in there besides yeah. that. Yeah, I 100 percent agree. Just digging deep on that why and trying to see how how many levels you can go down with that why. If it's like, well, my goal is to lose 50 pounds. Well, why is that? OK, well, yeah. why is that? And just keep digging until you get you get uh, I, I had this client. It was six foot seven. Uh -huh. I, I did this, this, uh, this whole exercise with him where we dug deep on his why. I eventually got into where he was tearing up. I'm like, all right, now we got it. And That's he, it. And he dropped 70 pounds because, you know, he wanted to be there to walk his daughter down the aisle. He wanted to be there for his grandkids. He wanted his wife to be able to put her arms all the way around him uh, when she hugged him, you know? Yeah. So that, I, I think you're just right on the money with, with getting, getting the guys at their heartstrings a little bit and, and connecting yeah. that why. That's super important. Now, I actually de-emphasize a lot of the physical part of it. Yeah. Uh, because what, what ends up happening is they start chasing the goal of the six-pack abs. And as you get older, I mean, I, I don't – I hate to bust anybody's bubble, but it takes effort depending upon your body type. It takes a lot of effort at 50 years old to maintain a six-pack. Yep. So maybe you don't have the time – or the inclination to really put in an effort, but you don't want to be disappointed either. All right. So that's why I kind of de-emphasize that. I mean, if you want a six pack, understand what goes into it and then decide if that's what you really want. But if you really just want to be healthy and look good and closed, you don't need to be 10% body fat. You can right. be 14 or 15% body fat and be fine. Right. Right. Now, I like the way that the direction that we're going here. And I know that you're big on habits, just like I am. Yeah. Uh, and just, you know, habits, processes, trying to automate things and get that so it integrates into a really healthy lifestyle that we feel like we can flow with. So uh, let's talk about some anti-aging habits and your recommendations as far as how we should be taking care of our body as we age. If we are that person approaching 40 like I am or somebody that's in their 40s or 50s, like where do we need to be focusing our effort uh, just to make the most, you know, the most bang for our buck, the most time uh, most uh, of our time that we're putting into it. Well, I think the the number one habit as far as as far as anti aging, uh, diet is incredibly important. So awareness, I think, is one of the first steps. So when I when I first start working with clients, what we'll do is we won't change anything right away. What we'll do is we'll use an app like My Fitness Pal, and I will have them just sort of track what they're eating because what happens is we're all on automatic pilot. Right, And so throughout the course of the day, we'll just eat and we'll just eat and we'll eat. And even though we think we're not eating very much or we think we're overall eating pretty healthy, once you actually look at my fitness pal at the end of the week, you'll be like, what the? I ate this? <laughs> you you got to be kidding me. I didn't, I didn't realize that I was consuming this much or this balance of macros or these sort of things. And – but just to, just being in the habit of being mindful every single time you're putting things into your mouth, that in itself will change the way that you eat. You know, I so what I'll do because um, we had Easter Sunday right this yep. this weekend. I mean, everybody did right. So um, I went out to Easter brunch, and I had already decided that I'm not going to pay any attention at all to what I'm doing. But I'm so used to paying attention to what I'm doing. I, even though I said I wasn't going to, I did, you know? So in the end, I, I mean, I put away some food yeah. and I know I did, you know? Um, and when you kind of, when you're aware of when you're putting a bunch of stuff into your mouth, then you'll know how to stop it. That's all I'm saying. Most people have absolutely no idea what they're doing. Yeah. And then of course the next step is the, the physical habits that you need to create for life. And so instead of, again, the goal of I need to lose 20 pounds in six weeks and I'm going to do these things to hit that goal, instead is I need to not only lose those 20 pounds, but I need to maintain it for the rest of my life. What is, what is going to be my plan for the rest of my life to do it? And what I do is I start people off with something very small because everybody tells me the one thing, I don't have any time. Yeah. I'm way too busy. I want to work out, but I do not have time. So tell me, Jesse, what can I do? 
All right, so first thing we have to do is we have to change that person's identity. And originally, the person is identifying as somebody that would like to lose weight, somebody that would like to be in better shape, but they don't have time. By the time I'm done with them, they change to a person. I am a healthy person, and so all the habits that I do are going to go towards that point. But we got to start off somewhere very simple. And where we start off is just – I use the Pomodoro technique a lot. You're yep. familiar with that, of course, right, for focus. So what I do is I say, okay, listen, while you're at the office, set your little Pomodoro timer for 25 minutes and do your focus. After, after the 25 minutes, you have five minutes to do something physically active. And that can be just doing squats from your chair, you know, where you're just kind of just doing this kind of thing, you know. Or it can be um, going outside and walking up and down the stairs. It can be walking around the block. It can be doing 20 push-ups. Whatever it is, instead of just working straight through the day like you normally do, you're going to take a five-minute break, and you'll do that two times an hour. Now, you don't have to do it every single time, but let's say you did it six times during the course of the day. Well, that's 30 minutes of activity yep. that you wouldn't have had. Yep. But it just shows them they can build a habit until we can actually start to schedule in some workouts for them. Yeah, I think that's super important because like you said, the main excuse most people have is time. I don't have time to yeah. work out, Jesse. I can't do it. I'm too yeah. too damn busy. So squeezing it in those little five minute chunks, people don't realize like that's, like you said, that's 30 minutes if you knock that out six times. And if you do that every day, I mean, you're going to be making some serious headway there and you're going to be building momentum and building habits. And yes. that is going to encourage you to keep going and keep layering things on. So uh, that's huge. All right. What other habits you got, Jesse? Uh, let's see. Um, so one thing that really helped me with my weight loss journey was intermittent fasting. And that seems to be the easiest strategy for somebody that does not have time. Yeah. And actually, I say doesn't have time, but you and me know that's that's really a fallacy. Right? But um, but for that's that's a good strategy for people that believe they do not have time to exercise. Um, and intermittent fasting, for your listeners are familiar with it, it's very very simple. All you're doing is you're saying during this particular window in time during the day, I'm not going to eat. I'm just going to drink water and drink some coffee and that kind of thing. And you lose weight naturally because instead of most people wake up at seven, eight in the morning, they start eating from then and they eat until they go to bed at eight or nine at night, right? So they may be eating for 16 or 17 hours of that day. Intermittent fasting lowers that window to about eight hours. And so typically in eight hours, you will eat less food than you will eat in 17 hours. It's that simple. Yeah. Now, intermittent fasting has a whole bunch of other benefits that, that we don't need to go into with increasing longevity and helping the body cleanse and all sorts of things. But that is a super easy strategy to utilize. Uh, there's plenty of information out there. People can research intermittent fasting if they would yeah. like, or they can visit me. Yeah. So with inter your intermittent fasting, I always get questions about like the timing. Do you have a mm -hmm. certain, like some people really prefer AM or PM. Do you have a certain recommendation around that? Or is it more based off of when that person is available to eat and when that matches their lifestyle? What's, what are your thoughts around that? I always think that you need to make the chunk of it while you're asleep. Uh, that's the easiest easiest way to do it. So, And I don't like going to bed hungry. So what I will typically do is I'll stop eating at 9 o'clock, okay. and then I'll start eating again the next day around 1 if I'm doing a 16-hour fast. So I'm doing an 18-hour, and I'll start eating again at 3. Because that's actually a little bit easier. And what most people don't realize is eating can actually make you hungrier. Right. So yeah. if you get up in the morning and you eat toast and other fast burning carbs like that, you're going to be hungry in an hour and a half. All right. Then, then, then you're starving. That, that's what happens. Yeah. But if you wake up in the morning instead, you drink a whole lot of water, you drink some coffee, you get active, you get busy. You can easily go till noon or one before you're really, really hungry. And that's when you start eating. And that, that's 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 how that works. Nice. So. Uh, along the line of habits, like you seem like somebody that's obviously very focused, you know, yeah. you're, you're very dialed in. Do you have any daily habits, uh, you know, that you feel like are your kind of cornerstone that keep your, your mindset and your, your focus where it needs to be like things like journaling, meditation, anything like that that you do on a regular basis that seem to always help you like just go into the day and perform better? Yeah. So I definitely meditate, uh, every day. Uh, it's, 
you know, meditation is important on so many levels. And, you know, bringing down the cortisol, of course, is important for, for weight loss, too, you know. But uh, another thing that I do every single day is I weigh myself. Not because I'm looking to see that the scale is necessarily going down. Just because it is a guide that I can kind of focus on. At least, because one, one day I may be 100 and... I may be 185 pounds. The next day, maybe 191 pounds. Doesn't mean I gained six pounds of that. Right. You know, so you can't you can't think that way. But at least it, it enables me to sort of focus. Okay, well, I know I'm in this spectrum, and if I start to take my eye off of that ball, because that's what happened before, I took my eye off the ball. And I woke up one day, and now I was 240 pounds. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole thing. But you're just always aware. And I, and I want people to also remember this. The weight doesn't mean everything. I lost, there was one period of time where I lost um, 20 pounds of fat, but the scale only went down 12 pounds. And the scale only went down 12 pounds because I gained eight pounds of muscle over that period of time. You know, so a lot of times people are so focused on the scale and the scale means everything. But that is a habit for me just because I always want to remember, hey, listen, I'm in my 180s. I love being in the 180s. It's perfect for me, but I don't obsess about it. Yeah, I, I talk to people that, you know, we all have to deal with clients that are obsessed with the scale that really freak out. Why did I only go down one pound? I've been doing everything right, Adam. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, you approach that person and you say, all right, when you first signed up, if I told you that we're going to work out for three weeks and you were going to lose five pounds of fat and we we're going to strip five pounds of fat off your body and then I was going to layer on five pounds of hot, sexy, lean muscle tissue, <laughs> would, you be, you know, would you be psyched about that? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, until the scale says zero because that just it nets itself out. So that's kind of an aha moment. It's so hard for people to get off that yes. scale. They, they freak out and... Uh, it's just something that we all deal with as health professionals, I think. And that's why we talk to each other to kind of just, you know, we're like our, our fitness professional support group of like, you know, we, we, this is, this is why, this is why we're friends, Jesse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is, that is a, that, that's a big one. Yeah. So what about goal setting? Cause you seem like somebody that gets after it again, laser yeah. focused. Do you have any processes or I just want to pick your brain. I love talking to people sure. like you that have achieved big things in their life. And I just want to know how you are setting that out there for yourself, how you're holding yourself accountable, if there's any process to that. Yeah, so I don't, I don't use end goals anymore, um, you know, mainly because I'm, for the most part, I'm where I want to be. I am always focused on process goals. You know, so an end goal would be, I want to hit 185 pounds in you know, six weeks or whatever it is. I don't do that. Um, what's more important is I need to make sure that I'm working out in the gym four days a week. That's... That's what I do. That, that's my personal habit. And my personal habit is I need to make sure that I am active all the days of the week. And I have, I have a polar watch. I've had this watch forever. Nice. Yeah, right, yeah, so, and what this watch does, it's really kind of neat. And I know, I, I know the, um, the Apple watches do something very similar, but it actually will gauge your activity during the course of the day. All right, so... I can look at it, I see a little bar, and it'll say, hey, you know, Jesse, you haven't done anything today. You lazy bastard, get up and do something, right? I'm paraphrasing, but that's that's essentially what it's going to be. Yeah, conveyed. basically, yeah. <laughs> so, and this is another part of the awareness thing. And so when I know that it says something like that, then that means, hey, listen, let me grab my wife and daughter, and let's go grab our bikes, and let's ride around the neighborhood for a little bit. Let's go do something. Um, you don't necessarily have to do cardio every night, but... What I like to do, I have a Peloton, and I'll park it in front of the TV, and that's how I'll watch Game of Thrones. Nice. You know what I mean? Or I'll watch Walking Dead or something like that. Uh, you know, as opposed to just sort of sitting on the couch, and this is where a lot of mindless eating happens, too, is watching those shows. Yeah. You know, so as opposed to sitting on the couch and munching on something, you know, I just hop on the Peloton, and I don't get crazy. You know, I keep my heart rate 70 to 80%, and then I'll just sort of ride and watch the show. You know, so these are... These are these are things that I plan every single week. I know that I'm going to go to the gym four days a week, and I know that I'm going to be active on the other days. And then I just sort of fill in those gaps. Okay, did I do it? Was I active? And 95% of the time, I'm on. 
Nice. And for those uh, people that have listened to lots and lots of episodes of this podcast, this should be starting to sound familiar. Uh, I talk about my amazing results formula where you, you know, set out your nutrition plan and then you set out your fitness plan and then you understand what your danger zones are that could interrupt those things. And then you do the first three things consistently. So that's basically what you just laid out there is just mapping it out, being consistent, being committed, and then executing with consistency. And it's, uh, it's not uh, easy, but it is simple. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you know, uh, cause I was listening to your, your podcast, uh, when you were talking about your, your battle, your, your battle plan there. Yeah. And in, in your right, I mean, once you build those habits, they become automatic anyway. So whereas before it, it wasn't easy, you know, now I, I can't live any other way, yeah. you know, even, even the awareness of the food. I mean, I don't have to take the time to put stuff into my fitness pal, but I do a lot of the times anyway, yep. just because it's, it's easy for me. It's simple. And I eat a lot of the same things during the week. And, you know, with my fitness pal, you sort of hit the button and it brings back what you, I mean, it's, you just hit the button. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the, the, the interesting thing about fitness habits is that at the beginning, they always seem like, Oh my gosh, this is gonna be a total pain in the ass. And then at the end, like you just described, it's actually those are the, those things that we thought were going to be the pain in the ass actually make everything else easier. It lowers yeah. our, our decision fatigue and we're able to make bit better, like automated decisions. So it actually creates an easier path for us to follow. So it's uh, it's interesting, I think. Now, something I want to pick your brain on sure. in the anti-aging industry that it just kind of rubs me the wrong way. I don't know if it, in my hometown, there are a lot of doctors that are figuring out that you can make a lot of money. In the, in, in the anti-aging industry, getting people on anti-aging, like drug protocols, basically. Yeah. Like I had a client that was 30 years old, Jesse, that his doctor told him his testosterone was a little bit lower than normal, and he was going to prescribe him human growth hormone at 30 years wow. old. And like this guy was affiliated with the Indiana University football team, and like a couple years down the road, he ended up getting kicked out of that hope was he he was yeah. giving giving those guys a few uh extra supplements <laughs> so um they they had to to yeah. uh, get, get him out of the house there but what's <laughs> what's your opinion on that whole conversation are, are you seeing similar things like you, you even said like you know the, the hcb diet and all that stuff like yeah. that's being put into Guys, especially heads like, oh, your testosterone's low. You hear all these commercials when you listen to like ESPN radio, testosterone low, sex drive low. You need this, you know, thing. Yeah. So what's your, your, what are your thoughts around that whole conversation? Yeah, it's, it's funny you ask that. So, you know, I went through a lot of the low T stuff, um, you know, for, for a while. Uh, because that, you know, as you know, not only when you get older, but as you get obese, that affects your testosterone levels as well. So, I went to the doctor and they prescribed me, you know, the injections. And this was years ago. <clears throat> and I think I tried the injections for maybe a few weeks before I was like, dude, I, I don't like this. I don't like sticking myself with anything. I know they have the gels and all that stuff. But I've heard horror stories about the gels rubbing off on the kids. And I've yeah. heard all sorts of crazy stuff. You know, but the fact of the matter is I fixed my low testosterone with exercise because believe it or not exercise and sleep actually fix that and also there's um i read some studies where vitamin d3 is really effective and also i take a supplement called zma yep. um which is essentially zinc magnesium and i forget what the other thing is yeah it's magnesium aspartate so that's, that's yeah that, that's the ma it's tricky it always throws yeah, me off i'm like yeah. what's the a is it arginine no it's magnesium aspartate <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I'll, I'll take that and I'll tell you, um, just the exercise and the losing the weight, my testosterone levels are back to normal. Everything is, it's freaking awesome. Yeah. So I ask the public out there, you guys, what do you want? Do you want for the rest of your life to take a needle or rub a gel on you to artificially put this stuff into your body? Or would you rather just exercise a little bit and maybe take some vitamin D3 and, uh, and then everything be fine. So as far as the anti-aging, yeah, I mean, these guys are making a mint because everybody wants to be younger. But few people want to do the effort that it takes to naturally make themselves younger. Um, there, was a, there was a study by some Norwegian scientists where they, they talked about um, fitness age. And essentially what fitness age was is based upon 
how well your body could process oxygen, you know, so they would, they would test your O2 level, your VO2 max. And people with higher VO2 maxes, they would relate that to a lower fitness age. So if you were 50, but your VO2 max was equal to somebody that was 30, then physically your body was like somebody that was 30 years old. So the best way to lower your age is through diet and exercise. And you know, period in the story. And you start taking, you start injecting yourself with things. No idea what that's really doing to yeah. your body. Yeah, it, it's no scary. Idea. It's scary. Yeah. Like, it really freaks me out with the, these doctors that are pushing this stuff. And you know yeah. that their why is money, not helping people. Like, <laughs> right. you know, I mean, every once in a while, there may be somebody that really does need some some testosterone therapy and things like that. And I, I get that. Like, there's a time and place for that. But I feel like it's like, it's the go-to thing way yeah. too much right now. And especially somebody that's in their thirties. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. So, um, yeah. I'm glad that, that we're on the same side of this, uh, this battle here, Jesse. Well, people, and you're right. There are, there are times when I think people will need those sort of things, but testosterone, especially you can always try it naturally first. You know I mean? It just, just, just try it. Just, just make the changes. If you're obese, don't be obese anymore. Try yeah. it. See what happens, you know, yep. go back to the doctor. Same thing. If you're pre-diabetic, I mean, I remember the doctor trying to put, give me high blood pressure medication. Dude, I just had to exercise and eat better. You know, why are you giving me a drug? You know, that kind of thing. Insulin, the whole deal. So, yeah, I've, I've cut ties with a few different doctors where like it's, I have interesting background with this because my dad is a pharmacist. So growing up, oh, wow. I'm just like, I, and like, if I had a runny nose, it's like, let's get on antibiotics, you know, like, so the whole, like, get on drugs conversation was just like a part of my, my life. Yeah. And kind of like you, like, I realized I don't even like taking like allergy meds and, and things like that. Like, I don't like to put anything in my body that I don't have to. Uh, yeah. And I'm like deathly afraid of needles. So the whole like testosterone therapy, I'm like, there's no way in hell I could do that. Um, yeah. So, you know, just thinking about the the long-term decision that you're making if you do decide to go with testosterone therapy you don't totally need it like you said you're going to be dependent on that like your if your body starts stops making its own testosterone because you are yes. injecting it synthetically you are financially and physically like dependent on that and you're going to have to shell out those dollars every month and you're going to have to put in that effort and keep that process up and if you don't things are going to go south real fast and then like the whole thing like with like tumor growth like if you have a little bit of, of something brewing that's lurking in, in, in your mm -hmm. in your in your dna and you started injecting testosterone into the equation boom all of a sudden stuff like cancer is going to start popping up and that just freaks me the hell out as well so um I don't know, it's just it's a scary place to be man so the next thing that i, that I want to pick your brain on is yeah. i know you have some opinions uh, and this will be interesting about <laughs> the, uh, the whole body positive movement. Yeah. All right. And, I do. uh, uh, let's just, let's just turn you loose on that. So ex first, <laughs> first let's explain if, if people don't know what that means, let's explain what that means. And then let's talk about your, your thoughts on that. Okay. So the body positive movement now what's happened is the country as a whole has gone in this whole political correctness direction, some for the good and some, you know, more for the ill. And, you know, it's, and to some degree, what's happening with people that are overweight, we're telling them to embrace how they look. Um, there's, they're saying, be happy. It looks, it looks good. You're, you're happy. You should be happy in your own skin. And, and the, the, the issue that I have with it is that both sides, like any real debate, I mean, both sides have some good points. They're right. And then I have experience because I was, let's, let's start with kids, because that's really where yeah. a lot of the, the kids are really affected by this. I was, as I pointed out, I was an overweight kid. And I was an overweight kid in the 70s where there were significantly less overweight children than there are right now. So there was no body positive movement. Right. They're like, dude, you're, you're just kind of a fat kid, dude. What's going on, right? Yeah. Um, I will tell you, I was not happy being a fat kid, and it did hurt when people made fun of me. So that's that's a problem. I did, however, develop 
whether for good or for bad, I developed a need to get into shape. And I know with a lot of kids that goes too far, especially with a lot of girls where they become anorexic or bulimic or these sort of things. So I see really where the body positive movement is like, listen, this is killing our kids because we're telling our kids, if you look like this, you look wrong. And so they're going the whole other way and they're killing themselves by not eating or throwing up or these sort of things. Yeah. Okay, so there's there's that part of it. Well, now what's happened, though, is it's gone so far to the other side, people are embracing being obese. And they're happy about it like it's a good thing. But they're focused only on the aesthetic part of it. That's all they care about. All they care about is, hey, are you happy even though you're you're not fitting properly in your clothes? Well, no, because now this is the body positive. We are fitting properly. This is properly fitting. Yeah. But these people are not healthy. And so now we're teaching our children that it's okay to be – forget the aesthetic part. Forget how they look. We're teaching them that it's okay to be unhealthy. And as they grow up, they're teaching their children how to be unhealthy. And you see what's happened in our country. I mean, the percentage of people in our country that's obese, I mean, people debate whether it's 40% or 70%, doesn't matter. You can walk around anywhere and see the percentage of people that are overweight. Yeah. And then what's frustrating now is I look at child abuse in a lot of different ways. If I see that a parent's 400 pounds and the mom, the, the mom and the dad are both 400 pounds, and I see a child that's 10 years old that weighs 150 pounds or more, then that's the parent's fault. That in itself is child abuse. You are setting your child up to be unhealthy for the rest of their lives. You're teaching them that. Yeah. So there's where, you see, I'm just, it's, it's frustrating. Yeah, yeah. It's, I feel like it's important to not accept being unhealthy. Like, Yes. You know, that we're not going to beat ourselves up and, and shame ourselves, but you can't accept it at all. At all. And it goes back to the why. If you just yeah. describe that family, talk about that family you just described, like those parents need to think, all right, I want to be around for that child and I want that child to be around. I don't want to bury my child because of, you know, childhood uh, diabetes or, or yes. if they get cancer or something like that. That's like a parent's worst nightmare. So, I feel like that's the shift that we need to make is not accepting bad health uh, and just doing something about it, putting our, our damn foot in the ground and going, Hey, I'm not putting up with this crap anymore. I'm going to reclaim control of my health, my life, and be you know, somebody that leads by example for my children, not dragging them through the same path of obesity that, I, that I've walked down. So yeah, I think, I think we're on the same page there, Jesse, for sure. Yeah. I saw a, um, an episode of uh, the rap game. I don't know if you saw this show, um, but it was basically like American Idol for teenage rappers, right? Nice, yeah. And uh, Jermaine Dupri was the you know, the guy hosting it. And there's a girl on there. She's 16 years old, great rapper, and she's overweight, right? Um, and her mother and her, her parents are both overweight. Her mother's extremely overweight, and her mother on the show had a seizure, you know, on 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 the show. Man. And and there's a scene there where you know how, like, they talk to the camera, you know, this daughter's talk to the camera. And she goes, you know, my dad, my dad just had, he's had eight TIAs, which are basically like mini strokes, right? My dad's had eight TIAs because of stress. So in her mind, the reason he's, he's sick isn't because he's overweight or he said has nothing to do with it. It's only because he has stress that he's going through these health issues. That's what's going on. Her mother... Now, our mother, I really hope her mother's going to be okay. turns out her mother actually has cancer now, okay? So who knows if dietary habits would have fixed it or not. Who knows? Who knows if if that contributed to cancer or not? All you can do is guess. You have no idea. But the point is there's a scene where she's like, I'm just so glad my parents are here for me. I know they love me. They'll do anything for me. And there's another scene where the mother's talking. I love her so much. I'm glad I can be here for her. There's nothing I wouldn't do for her. But I'm thinking there's nothing they won't do for except get in shape and teach her that being healthy is important. And that's the part that they're leaving out. And so that goes back to what we were talking about before. People don't see fitness as a gift for their family. They don't see that as something their family wants. So anyway, sorry, I went off on the thing. No, I mean, 
I, we could even go a little bit deeper and be like, if you're a parent out there and you aren't leading by example for your children, imagine yourself looking down on your funeral and your kid is sitting there. How does that make you feel? Like, let's wow. say, let's say you've got, let's say you've got a 12 year old kid, you know, getting ready to enter their, their teenage years, you know, and you aren't there, you know, you aren't there to support them, to guide them, to, to parent them. Yeah. To, to be a friend in that time of change as they're figuring things out, what path do you think they're going to go down? Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's just a scary thought, but sometimes people need to sober up to that thought and be like, this is the road we're walking down. If you keep going in the path that you're going, that's where it ends up. Uh, so wow. think about that million pound mission listeners. Um, we got in, we got <laughs> intense. We got intense. Um, now, uh, I know that let's you've got, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's lighten it up. I want to talk about your book because you got an awesome book. Uh, that is really, you know, that, that you're putting out there for free, right? You said our, our listeners can download it. Is that, is that true? Or yeah. did, I, did I make that up? No, yeah, true? Okay, no, good. Download for free. Go to <laughs> fitbeyond40book.com. You know, the book is, there, there's a lot of fitness books out there. Um, and I decided to make something that was more fun, you know, so um, you'll read it. It's, it's, it's a fun read. So, you, you have, you have, that's all I can say. It's, it's not, you're not going to go in there and just have a whole bunch of tables and all sorts of stuff that's going to bore you to death. It's really just a fun read that sort of talks about what my journey was, how I was able to overcome it, and, and figure out how to maintain healthy a healthy lifestyle for life. And um, just sort of gives you some tips on how to do that as well. But it, it's a fun short read. So, yeah, please go to fitbeyond40book.com, download it, and enjoy now, is that 40 the number or 40 spelled out? That's important. It's spelled out. Yeah. Okay, good. And I'll link that up in the show notes, and that'll be in the blog as well for you guys. Uh, now, where else can people connect? Where do you, do you like to hang out on social media? What, what's your jam there? Yeah, yeah. So um, I've, got a, um, I've got a YouTube channel, all right? And uh, that's Fit Beyond 40. Everything's kind of branded Fit Beyond yeah. 40. Um, Instagram, Fit Beyond 40 Life. I'd be really easy to find me. But if you go to fitbeyond40.life, that is my website. On my website, you have links to everything. You can read more about me. And if they're interested in going further, um, I even offer 60-minute strategy calls uh, to help you sort of break through and figure out what you can do to achieve lifelong health and vitality. Nice. Awesome, Jesse. I'll get all those links in the show notes in the blog as well. Now, I like yeah. to not only inspire the audience, I like to put them into action, all right? Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a scenario. Let's say that you get a chance to talk to somebody that's listening. So they are primed. They, they've listened to this conversation. Yeah. They realize it's time for them to change. Let's say that they're in the exact same situation that you were in when you were in your, your 40s and you were deciding whether you were actually going to make that change or not. Obviously, there's some nerves going uh, yeah. You have to make that first step. You get to sit down with that ideal person right now that is exactly where you were. Sit them down, look them in the eye, and give them an action step to take in the next 24 hours. What's that going to be? All right. First off, I want you to write down exactly why you want to make that change. Right? The, the why is the single most important thing. You want to write that down in detail. And then I want, to write, I want you to write down where you see yourself in 20 years with your family. So give me a scenario. Tell me if you're going to be on a vacation somewhere and where the vacation is going to be and what you guys are going to do. All right. So these are the things I want you to do first. And once you write down where you're going to be, then I want you to write down exactly, this is, this part takes a little bit longer, but I want you to write down what you're going to, or what your last week was like. I want you to write down how you spent your time during the course of the week, because the biggest excuse that people have, and I'm just saying between me and you, the biggest excuse people have is time. So I always have them write down how they spent their time the week before. Then I have them during the week coming up track their time, because a lot of times how they feel like they spent their time is different from how their time was actually spent. Yes. And so it's a good way to sort of put a mirror up. So those are the first action steps. I was doing. Nice. Thanks, Jesse. So uh, you guys have your action steps. You've got your, your walking uh, homework here. Uh, Jesse, thank you so much, man. I, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your energy. I'm excited that we're connected. I can't wait uh, to collaborate and uh, kind of mesh our ideas and put some good stuff out there together. Um, I know you're super busy. you got a lot going on. I'm proud of you. And I just want to thank you again for spending some time here with the Million Pound Mission. Thanks, brother. really enjoyed being here, man.
All right, everybody. You've got your action step. You've been inspired. Uh, you've had some Jesse Walker mojo spilled upon you, and now you're ready to take that and get, <laughs> get into motion, all right? And that, my friends, is how we get out there. That's how we own it every meal, every workout, every day. I will see you on the next episode. Hey, thanks for hanging out for the after party here at the Million Pound Mission Podcast. I hope you love that episode. Jesse just brings the fire, doesn't he? What a good dude. Dive into his world with all the links in the show notes and the blog and check out his stuff. I think you will not regret that. Now, tomorrow I'm bringing another new influencer on New Influencer Week and we're going to talk about healing your relationship with food. It's going to be a good one. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button and tune in tomorrow for our final new influencer of the week. We're going to end with a bang. Now, speaking of a bang and getting some mojo going and getting some excitement going, uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the show, habitlaunchchallenge.com. Don't miss out on our seven-day, 10-minute mobility challenge. It's coming up on June 10th. It's going to be awesome. The energy that we are able to bring with these free challenges uh, is pretty awesome. So uh, I haven't been promoting them on the podcast like I should. Uh, I kind of wanted to build that that community and build that mojo up a little bit first before I brought it directly to you guys. So it's awesome. Uh, I give it my Adam PhD stamp of approval. You will love it. So go to habitlaunchchallenge.com. It's a great thing to plug into. I mean, not everybody's like, oh, I'm achy all the time and I feel like I need mobility. Uh, most of us do. Let's be, be truthful. Hashtag the truth. But maybe you just need a little bit of, of mojo. Maybe you just need a little bit of community. Maybe you just need some support to kind of turn uh turn your momentum around to get a little bit of traction going so uh, check it out habitlaunchchallenge.com you will not regret it all right we'll see you tomorrow for that next new influencer spotlight episode